Oh, we got a game here. Let's say hello and zoom in on the board and let's uh, make a move. Okay. He's uh, looks like he's going for a static rook. Um, I'll go for the central rook, I think. And get my king over. Yeah, I'll go ahead and push push the lance pawn once. That'll be part of my castle over here. Let's see. Let's go ahead and lift up the silver. King can still step over into the castle. What has he got? So he's got a line of metal pieces here above his king. Bishop here. I'm not sure where he's going with that. I can um, bring my silver up, my other silver. <clears throat> Okay, and then he steps his king to the side. So let's let's go ahead and finish my castle. And uh, maybe he's going to bring a silver out over here by his rook. Okay, decide to push the rook pawn once more. I will move my bishop up to defend. Yeah, and then he brings the silver out. So I'm okay here. I'm going to start pushing central pawn, the one in front of my rook there. Let's see if we can disrupt his perfect pawn front there for a while. Let's um, I'll go ahead and push the lance pawn wants to keep his silver out of that square. Okay, so now bishop on this diagonal would hit his uh, rook. Sometimes that's useful. If I push this pawn and move my bishop here. Mm. And I think I'm going to continue with my uh, <clears throat> my rook pawn here, the pawn in front of my rook, the central pawn. So he attacks the head of my bishop, which is defended. So he takes, I take. If I take, it brings his silver forward and then I drop. He will probably push this pawn instead of responding to the drop. So let's uh, ignore that and push. Now, where do I want to go back to? I guess uh, second rank is still good. So I wanted to go here and try and win that pawn. Is there a disadvantage to this square? Well, it's on the path of his bishop there, isn't it? Okay, I'll go back here. Oh, he switched. He switched his rook to the other file. So now um, I can open up this bishop's diagonal. Or I could bring the rook over behind. He takes, and then I just drop back with the bishop. Bishop here to here, maybe. Looking at the lance, maybe it's an idea. Okay, well, he's stopping to think for a little bit. That's always good. <laughs> this was a kind of a fast game. He wanted a five-minute with a 30-second Byoyomi, and he did play fast. 
got a, quite a time advantage. But um, we're both going to end up trying to <laughs> play within the Byoyomi there. Okay. So, yeah, I'm going to do that maneuver with my bishop that I was talking about. I guess if he brings a silver up, that will stop me from putting the bishop on this square. Yeah. Okay, let's um, bring the gold up here, complete my castle. So I can take that now. <clears throat> I see. If I take with the uh, silver... Then he can take this pawn. That's his plan. But then I can bring my uh, bishop out hitting the lance. What can his silver do? His silver can uh, drop a pawn here. With the silver, he can drop a pawn there. Well, I think I need to take anyway. Yeah, so bishop out of the way to, uh, first of all, yeah, there's a fork coming. Oh, that square is covered. That square is covered. But I think the bigger problem is the pawn drop. Here, here, or here. Any one of those three. Oh, no. The only square you can drop a pawn on is this one. And that is covered by bishop and what's covered by the knight. When he drops the pawn, though, it hits, um, hits my rook. And it also undefends my silver. So maybe I should just move my silver. So I move the silver. If he takes the silver, I'll take his rook. So he has to take the rook. Then maybe he can drop a pawn. Or maybe he has a rook drop. Anyway, let's see if this works. I had to, I had to get out of that situation somehow. Getting low on time. Trying to figure this out. My castle is not complete, but uh, well, that, that is a, a full Mino castle there, so it's not too bad. I mean, you can continue by pushing this pawn up and bringing the gold over. So with the dropped pieces, I guess um, we'll see. He could still drop a pawn there. But then I could take it with the knight, I guess. If he takes my silver, I take his rook. And he takes my bishop and I take his silver back. So it ends up being a rook-silver trade. I mean, a rook-bishop trade. <clears throat> he did drop the pawn, yeah. So I think I have to take with the knight. And uh, he might be able to win some material here with a pawn drop on the knight now. But his silver is still hanging at the moment, so he has to trade the silvers first. But I still have my bishop move here, hitting his lance as an idea. He's got this diagonal almost open. That's true. His his bishop is hitting my lance on the corner, too. So he dropped a pawn. So I take the silver. He takes the pawn. I mean, he takes the knight. Oh, he takes the silver back first. Okay. Then my knight is in trouble. But um, it's... Silver. I could attack his silver. He takes the pawn. I take back. I mean, he takes the knight. I take back. <laughs> Running low of time.
Oh, my, uh, my Rick is undefended now. Okay, well, I'll solve that. So I've got a bishop and a silver in hand. He's got a bishop, silver, and knight. So he basically won a knight in that exchange. And he goes for the rook exchange, too. Really going whole hog. But with the rook exchange, I have, a, I have a nice rook drop here. So is he going to drop a rook defensively? No, he'll drop one aggressively. Yeah, let's do this rook drop. Defends the gold and puts the rook in a good square. Now I can't take anything here. <laughs> if I do take something, it will leave this uh, gold undefended. Let's uh, defend the gold and attack his rook. Then I'll take the knight. He can take my lance. take here and promote <clears throat> okay and he's doing the typical silver drop there but um, he doesn't have another drop after I take the silver so I'll just take that he has a bishop drop ah bishop drop and then he can take the gold okay what have I got? I guess his king is really safer than mine at this point. The silver is hanging. So he can trade his horse for two silvers. That's a good deal for him and my king will be Pretty lonely there, but I didn't see a move there. Or he could set up a mate threat. Um, <coughs> he was just threatening to drop a gold somewhere. I, I don't know if it was quite a mate, but looked, looked pretty pretty dangerous. Let's see, I have a knight drop here. Uh, he just retreated, uh, interesting. But now, yeah, now my bishop is all tied up. Okay, um, let's take a lance. <laughs> I'm gonna drop a lance here, hitting this pawn. I have my... Uh, these two pieces are not doing anything, so probably not a good situation for me. Is there a sacrifice I can make? Okay, he pushes the edge pawn. Let's see, when he takes, I'll deal with it later. Can I sacrifice something so I can drop a piece here? I know, knight here hitting his um, horse, and then here. Or just knight here directly. Coordinating with the lance on the square in front of his king. So he doesn't like that. He's looking at my dragon, my lance. Anything else? What can I do? Ah, I brought another defender here. Okay, and he's protecting this square. Let's, uh, let's drop a pawn. That way I can drop a knight here.
He did bring his horse back to defend, so like if my bishop were on this diagonal hitting this pawn, his gold is up defending and his horse is there defending. Okay, he lifted his... Uh, He lifted his lance. Oh no, he dropped a lance. I see, he's piling up on this. I'm, I'm piling up on his king here. Coordinating with the dragon, hopefully. Um, so he took, I will take, I have a golden hand. And if he takes, yeah, I'll drop the gold here to check his king. Maybe. So he goes for the check first. So I was thinking take here he's got two lances he can take but I can run he takes this lance I'll take back he takes I take ah so he took there so I've got a gold here I can drop it here with check the king has to go here then what Hoping to sandwich him in between my pieces here, but I need um, I need to take one of those. Um, Yeah, he dropped a gold. Yeah, I could almost deflect him, but he could step up. So what I was going to do was uh, step back here <clears throat> and maybe get a get a lance in hand or something. take the uh, uh, so he drops a pawn yeah let's go forward <clears throat> okay he promotes aha uh -huh. yeah this is going to win him some material but I will get a uh, lance might be mating I can't tell but he will take here and promote. Okay, so if I have a move with check, I can play it. If I don't, he will drop something here. He doesn't have a gold to drop there. That's interesting. Uh, so he can't actually mate me in one move that I see. Um, so a lance here, a knight here, check. Gold here, check. King will go there. Oh, <laughs> I lost on time. But, uh, well, I, w I was losing anyway. Here, let's say thanks for the game. Have a nice day. Um... Yeah, I just uh, overstepped the time boundary. Well, it's tough to make those decisions in time. What happened here? So this was the final position in the game, I think. Yeah, so he's just won a bishop here. It's my move. I wanted to put something on this square. I have a lance. I also have the knight. I, at the end, I was like just putting the knight here, but he can take it. I wasn't seeing that. So my other idea was to put the gold here, and if the king takes it, then I could take this gold with check.
but the king can step here, and then I didn't uh, didn't particularly have a good answer for that. Yeah, I think I just don't have enough force around his king to really have a big threat, so so he was probably better all the way. Well, we can check this out with Elmo and see what Elmo has to say. So uh, see you guys later. Bye. So here's the graph that Elmo made uh, looking at our game. I was sente in this game, and the bars above the line are in my favor, and the bars below the line are in my opponent's favor. And it seems like I did okay in kind of the first half, and then I made a mistake, and then uh, and I, I lost fairly quickly. I was also low on time in this section, so I missed a couple chances to come back. But anyway, let's, uh, let's step through the game. There are a couple of interesting points here. So I'm playing this uh, central rook. My opponent is setting up some kind of castle here that I'm not familiar with, <laughs> uh, but it's a static rook position. And he starts uh, attacking with his silver and his rook on the second file and then the third file. He's going after those files. And I start pushing my uh, pawn in the center. So as we can see um, in the evaluation, it's slightly favorable to me at this point. Um, I don't think that means very much at this level. I just thought there was this interesting moment here. After I, um, after I uh, take that pawn and he drops, um, Elmo is giving a, another option for me here. It's saying that actually I can move my rook to the side rather than retreating. And uh, that's, that's an interesting move. I mean, the rook is threatening to come in and promote. And uh, the line given by the computer is to have him drop his silver back here to uh, protect his camp and also chase my rook. And then I can uh, take a pawn. And, you know, I was I would have been worried about my rook being trapped over here. But on this row, the, the rook has a number of squares it can move to. So it's not easily getting trapped. So that seems to be uh, the way to play there. Anyway, I just drop back with my rook. And that seems to be OK as well. It's just uh, not as good. But I mean, it keeps the range, the game in the range of about even. And then uh, when he's switches to the third file. I switch to the third file to oppose. Um, the uh, Elmo is, is saying, I can actually uh, take take the pawn here. It's recommending this move. Just go ahead and take the pawn. The silver takes back and then push this pawn forward. That was a line given by Elmo. And, uh, and then there's nothing really the silver can do. Um, if he comes forward, I'll just trade. If he drops a pawn, uh, my bishop can crumb out to this square. That's the point of uh, pushing the uh, pawn on the sixth file forward. Uh, my bishop can come out to the square 5e, looking at the lance in the corner. So um, all of that seems to be okay for me. Um, but defending was okay as well. It's just a little better to play the other way. And uh, But this keeps the game around even and uh, stays around even. Here, uh, uh, yeah, let's back up. Here I had an opportunity. Um, when he pushed his pawn forward, I, uh, I took right away. I could have uh, dropped a pawn. There's an intermediate move here. If I drop a pawn to this square, uh, attacking his silver, then the silver has to go back, and then I can take the pawn. And... Uh, there's no, there's no big threat of him pushing the pawn forward at this point. Um, I have this diagonal um, blocked, so if he pushes the pawn forward after I drop a pawn, I can just take it, and, and then he still has to move his silver. So, uh, so that would have been a nice uh, intermediate move. Instead of responding immediately to this pawn push, drop a pawn myself. Uh, but I, I didn't see that. Let's see, I took the pawn. And he comes in here, and, and so this is a slight advantage for him. Let's see, instead of retreating the bishop, once again, I have a, a pawn drop, this time at uh, 6g. It's recommending a pawn drop uh, here to this square, after which uh, he would maybe drop a pawn here. <laughs> it gets complicated, but uh, so my retreating here wasn't, wasn't best. And he's got a slight advantage at this point. So he dropped a pawn, I take it. He dropped another pawn. That, that seems to be his mistake. His follow-up should have been to uh, take the knight with the silver according to, according to, um, yeah, I think if he just takes the knight with the silver, he's, he's got the bishop and the rook behind it. I think he just wins some material there. Anyway, he dropped another pawn. I take his silver 
and then uh, I take the night and this seems to be okay this this transaction works out and it's just a little bit in my favor here he drops a rook and uh, I have a good move here I immediately dropped this rook with check because I saw oh that rook there in addition to checking it's also defending my gold here which was under attack but there's an even better drop that I had in this situation which is to uh, let's back up a move I can drop my bishop. I had a rook and a bishop in hand, and the bishop drop is even stronger because I can drop the bishop here where it defends the uh, uh, gold, and it also attacks the lance in the corner, and, uh, and then it moves with the promotion. So it's a nice, uh, nice way to pick up some points there. Uh, it's a pretty strong move. Anyway, I missed that. I dropped the rook. And uh, he just uh, defended with uh, his gold. And then um, there's a tactic on the board at this point that I could have taken advantage of, and that would have uh, given me a winning advantage here. So this is the kind of thing I, I think I'll pause, uh, recommend you look for this. So pause the video here and see if you can spot the tactic. Okay, I'm going to give the answer away now. Um, what I can do is, uh, once again, it's a bishop drop. I have a bishop in hand, and there's two loose pieces on the board. The silver is loose, and this rook is loose. And, uh, you know, my knight is, my gold is defended here, so I don't have to do anything about that right away. So that's a pretty strong move. Um, Elma would first uh, drop a silver here to this square, and... Uh, it, the line it gives uh, black defends or my opponent defends I take he takes and then and then drop the uh, then drop the bishop there for the fork so we we'll do it in that order it's apparently a little stronger but uh, just the immediate bishop drop to win that would have been good enough to give me a winning advantage so uh, that's the kind of thing I, I really didn't spot that during the game and uh, I don't know if I was low on time yet, but uh, this kind of thing, uh, it should really pop out. I think if I were, uh, that's what I have to do to get stronger is just uh, these kind of things need to become more obvious to me. But the fact that there's two loose pieces here, you know, a loose piece here, a loose piece here, and they're connected by being on the same uh, diagonal complex uh, and that I have a, a, a silver, I mean, a bishop in hand, it should kind of, uh, well, you know, I should, my tactic sensor should be triggered just by the fact that I have a couple of loose pieces on the board and a bishop in hand. And if I had thought to look for it, I, I probably could have found it. Probably could have found that move if I had looked for it. Um, but anyway, that was my uh, best chance. Um, after that, it's still about even. I thought this was a good move. Uh, maybe was, I was in a hurry to play this one. I'm defending my uh, gold so that my uh, rook in, in his camp can promote and take a knight or take a knight and promote and that's a reasonable way to play i mean it's still slight edge to me and my final mistake here is this one when i just take his uh i take this uh silver that he dropped and then he follows up with a bishop drop and then he's uh he's chasing me around it's pretty strong uh, the best defensive move is to drop a pawn and i can drop a pawn on this square it's nice. All the pawns have been cleared out over here. And a pawn drop here, defended by the silver. This uh, keeps a slight advantage to me. I guess maybe I have some material edge. I do have a, a gold in his, I mean, a dragon in his camp. I still can maybe go after some of these pieces here. I have a bishop in hand. He has a bishop in hand too. So the material in hand looks pretty even. I have a lance I can take. Um, anyway, the Elmo slightly prefers my position to my opponent here if I just uh, would have defended by dropping a pawn. But I played the wrong defense. And at this point, I really was getting low on time. So uh, even though I missed a few opportunities here, based on the graph going up and down, uh, my opponent kept kept the advantage the rest of the way. And uh, he could have finished me off quicker, probably. But uh, at this point, it's hopeless. So uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this game. And I will see you next time. Bye.